having on occasions, many, several occasions in fact, visited the DRC, I've never forgotten arriving in Goma after a very complicated journey by road from Kigali. It was almost dark and we went to a women's centre and it was by that time completely dark and the audience that was waiting for us, a small delegation of us, was three or four hundred women, all of whom had been victims of rape and wanted some degree of closure on the horror of their experience, if that is possible, but they also wanted some degree of international recognition of the horrors they were going through, where the armed groups routinely use rape as a weapon of war. Behind this, of course, is the thirst for minerals in the Congo, it is the search for cobalt and coltan, and it is the use of child labour as well as the exploitation of women in doing that. And it's the international mining companies that wash their hands of this and pretend they're buying the um, vital minerals from responsible sources. They're not. They're buying them secondhand from the exploited children and others that have um, suffered this in the Congo. And so we have to put this in that wider context of insecurity there. We're very proud in Islington to have one of our councillors who herself comes from the Congo, Micheline Ngongo, and she just sent me a message, and she, quite a long message, I won't read it all, but she says, loss of income and food insecurity can lead to the spiking of violence and abuse. Um, and she goes on to say that the high level of um, incidence of abuse is, reflects the gender inequality and poverty of so many people in the DRC. And so when the Minister replies, I hope you'll be able to say what we're also doing about the question of the breakdown of any form of um, uh, law process in the Congo to try and protect women and children from the violence that they're going through and what demands we're making of the mineral companies, both in this country, in Switzerland, China, and elsewhere, who are buying minerals knowing they've been produced in the most appalling circumstances. And the victims of this are women who have no means to protect themselves, no defense whatsoever. And so rape has just become a pandemic of violence against women in the DRC. And I hope that we can reflect that in the policies that we pursue.